G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. 1MJ here. Well, so there's been a ledger hack, uh, a Bitcoin ledger hack going on since 2019. That's pretty scary. But when we read into the article, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say uh, it's it doesn't sound like it's that bad because a hack is a hack and it has been bad. But hopefully uh, no one's lost a ton of Bitcoin. But let's go in and have a look exactly what it is. So a vulnerability in Ledger's hardware wallets allows a request for an altcoin transaction to actually request the movement of Bitcoin. The exploit was reportedly disclosed to Ledger back in 2019. Ledger said because it's, uh, it's because the firmware wanted to avoid a situation where the user funds would be locked and users are unable to spend their funds. So it's been running since 2019. Uh, and they didn't want to basically lock down everyone's uh, Bitcoin funds and so they just uh, let it uh, go on and I'm guessing it wasn't happening all the time otherwise this would have been a massive issue long before but let's have a read into it an exploit in Ledger's crypto hardware wallets could allow malicious actors to steal Bitcoin according to a report published by Laquility developer Mohammed Nokhbeh on Tuesday hopefully I didn't butcher his name <laughs> The attack wor uh, works by the bad actor creating a transaction that looks like an altcoin payment, a coin that isn't Bitcoin, when it actually takes Bitcoin out of the wallet instead. An attacker can exploit this method to transfer Bitcoin while the user is under the impression that a transaction of another less value coin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, is being executed. This is worrying because the users think that they are uh, handing out, let's say, 0.01 of an altcoin, which would be far less valuable than 0.01 of a Bitcoin, for instance. A new version of the Bitcoin app will be released today with an update that will display a warning and prompt for confirmation when an unexpected path is used, therefore solving this issue. Now that came from a ledger spokesperson today, so hopefully uh, that uh, it doesn't get rid of it, so basically, it's just you're going to get a prompt coming up telling you that if you're trying to send Litecoin or something else, it's going to say uh, it's trying to send Bitcoin. And so then you just got to cancel that transaction and, and I guess try again later. Now, I've sent Litecoin uh, a few times uh, in the last sort of year or so. Uh, and as far as I know, I never lost any Bitcoin. So, you know, I guess I was lucky. But obviously, this has happened to people and you'd be really you know pissed off if you you know thought you were sending let's say five litecoin or something and all of a sudden you lost five bitcoin uh that would really really hurt so yeah concerning that that's been going since 2019 and, and we can only hope that you know no one out there lost too much but obviously uh this scam has been going on for a while and it has occurred the fact that it's been brought to their attention now if we scroll scroll down a little bit further it was discovered that Bitcoin and Bitcoin forks, the device exposes its functions for any of uh, the assets. In other words, having unlocked the Litecoin app, you will receive a confirmation request for a Bitcoin transfer while the interface presents it as a transfer of Litecoins to a Litecoin address. Uh, adding emphasis that accepting the confirmation produces a fully valid signed Bitcoin transaction. So yeah, it sounds like it's like to do with Litecoin and Bitcoin. Uh, uh, sorry, Litecoin uh, and Bitcoin Cash. So if you weren't really sending too much Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash over the last sort of year or so, you know, with a little bit of luck, you weren't uh, affected. But you know, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. This means that Ledger's devices will receive Bitcoin-related requests even if Bitcoin is not the crypto being used at the time. Worse. It will present such a transaction. It will present such a transaction as a transfer of the altcoins in question. So again, you think you're selling, you think you're sending Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash, and you end up sending Bitcoin, uh, and yeah, then you're going to get uh, stung for that, and that's going to go missing. So that's uh, a concern because a lot of us were probably all of the belief that you know Ledger was unhackable and all the rest of it. But it seems like uh, there's vulnerabilities even in Ledger. Uh, and it's good to know that they've fixed it up, but disappointing that it's been running for two, since 2019. So, you know, what is it now? It's August, so it's a minimum of eight months. And, you know, we don't know exactly when that sort of started back in 2019. So it could be getting close to a year. 
But anyway, they've fixed it and there's going to be a little prompt coming up telling you that uh, this is a Bitcoin transaction uh, when you're trying to send Litecoin or something like that. So good to know. All right. Bitcoin and S&P 500 no longer correlated, says Matty Greenspan. So this is good. Basically, this goes on to say that, you know, everyone was really concerned about uh, Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrencies being uh, highly correlated to the S&P 500. Uh, and people brought this up before that there's obviously times where it's more correlated uh, than usual, but overall it's not really correlated. Uh, and it's, you know, other than the big crash that happened in March uh, by the pandemic, and everyone knows about that. That happened to basically all investments though. It, it's not like it was just the S&P 500 and cryptocurrencies that went down. Everything took a massive sort of tank you know what i mean like even gold and silver went down a bit then but a lot of people had got into gold and silver before because it didn't go down as much as the s p 500 and cryptocurrencies and it's you know bounced back reasonably well as well so i think gold is now setting new all-time highs and silver is the highest it's been in a long long time so you know the smart money some people would say would got into that but getting into bitcoin wouldn't have been such a bad idea either but Moving on, basically this is saying, if you have a look at this, the following chart represents Bitcoin's correlation with the S&P 500 on a range of one perfect correlation to minus one inverse correlation. And you can see that it's up and down and it's all over the place. So it's you can't say that it is uh, trading you know, in correlation with the S&P 500. All investments have some kind of correlation because it's extra money that people have and they are investing it. If things are going bad, who knows which one they're going to pull out first. It'll be the one that's the most liquid and they, you know, like the least, I would say, they'll sell first and the last one they'll sell is the one that they truly believe in. And considering crypto is still such a very small market, then not a lot of people would sell their crypto. It'd be the people who are just... You know, they get into crypto, but it's the thing that they don't really care about. They're just out to make a quick buck. So as soon as something starts to turn wrong, they're the first to sell. But, you know, the true hodlers and, the you know, the, the true, I guess you could sort of say, OGs and people who are going to be around in the space for a long time, they don't get phased out by this. And, and they just hold, they're in it for the long term. So that's really good news because there's, there's a lot of talk that, you know, there's going to be another... Uh, fall off uh, in stocks and things like that in the S&P 500. Now, I can tell you right now, my personal opinion, not financial advice, that if stuff, if, if stuffs, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, if stocks take a massive hit, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is going to take a big hit as well. They are not completely coupled but they are somewhat coupled. It will still be the same thing. If stocks start to go down and, you know, people need money, they're going to sell Bitcoin. They're going to sell all, all the sort, or any kind of asset that they have, except for the ones that they truly believe in. So again, the true hodlers and the OGs, they won't sell their Bitcoin. Everyone who this is more just a quick buck and a fad thing, they're going to sell it straight away and that will cause the price to go down. But long term, People are pretty bullish on uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Now we can go over to here. Bitcoin price eyes new 2020 high once bulls break 11,800. So we're having another crack at 12,000 again, basically. It keeps getting up there and then drops down and gets up and drops down. And so again, we need to break that $12,000 mark. That's where we've really sort of struggled to get past and particularly the 11.8K range, according to uh, Ray Sal Salmond, uh, of Coin Telegraph. So what we can do is we can go over to Coin Gecko and we'll have a look. What are we trading at? Let's refresh this because it's probably been there for a while. Eleven thousand seven hundred and sixteen dollars. So we still haven't been able to really crack that eleven thousand eight hundred dollar mark, and we certainly haven't been able to crack that sort of twelve thousand plus dollar mark. At least stay above there. We've definitely wicked up above there. Let's go over to our chart and have a look. All right, so we can see that we're trading around that eleven thousand seven hundred dollar mark, and we're yet to really break up into that twelve thousand dollar mark. You know, we kind of wicked up to around about there, just over the twelve thousand dollar mark, but it quickly sold off. But then it was all bought back up, and we get very close to that, you know, sort of twelve thousand dollar mark, and now we're sort of stuck. And my gut feeling is we're going to range here for a while. 
but it'll be much the same as what's happened before. There'll be some sideways selling before eventually, you know, this will form a, a sort of a wedge. Uh, again, the, the lows will be getting higher and, you know, we might spike up really high and then pull back and then the highs will get a little bit lower and then we'll have that, you know, classic wedge pattern where there's going to be a breakout. Now, it could still be to the low. Who knows? We could go down to 10,500 or even lower. But I think most people uh, are fairly bullish that we're going to break upwards. Now, what we can do is also go over to here. I found this pretty funny. Bitfinex offers a $400 million reward for the return of $1.3 in stolen Bitcoin. Oh, if I had $1.3 in stolen Bitcoin, I don't know if I'd return it for $400 million, but there is a reason that they could. So basically what has happened uh, is Bitfinex was hacked back in 2016. Uh, and some of the Bitcoin has uh, been recouped, only a very small amount. But basically, the people who stole uh, this Bitcoin, they're having a hard time trying to, you know, funnel it off and, you know, you know basically be able to move it on uh, without getting caught. So what Bitfinex have done is said, look, get the Bitcoin back to us, $1.3 billion worth or whatever's sort of left, and we'll give you $400 million dollars. Uh, in cash and they'll basically sort of call it quits. Now there are some, some provisos and all the rest of it to it and they're just hoping that someone goes, you know what, we got 1.3 billion in uh, Bitcoin that we can't really do too much with and we're gonna have people chasing us down. Maybe we just return it and we get the 400 million. But I'm sure the hackers are probably thinking this is a stitch up and it's just a way to get us you know, trapped and all the rest of it. But I mean, who knows, they did offer a re reward originally when it was stolen back in 2016, immediately after. So, yeah, pretty funny. I, I guess, you know, you'd really have to ask yourself, you know, I, I can get around about half of what it's worth and walk away scot-free, no questions asked, allegedly, that's what they're saying. Or I can, you know, run the risk of trying to, you know, funnel this 1.3 billion off and, you know, put it through the washing machine and all the rest of it and try and wash it and, yeah, get away with it. Interesting, we'll have to wait and see. All right, what I wanted to have a, do, have a look is at Ethereum. So we come across here, and, and I do the Ethereum on the US chart now because really Ethereum uh, is outpacing Bitcoin by a long shot. So there's not a whole lot of point at the moment really you know, putting ETH to BTC because ETH is leading the way. You could almost say that really you should be putting BTC to ETH. But anyway, I'll just put it back to the USD at the, mark, at the moment. And we are oh so close to that $400 range like it's just sitting at that 395 US dollar mark and it has kind of peaked above $400 for a minute there but now it's just kind of yeah again we get up to sort of 400 and then it just sells off a bit but yeah it looks like it's probably going to build a bit of a base here and then it's just going to rock it up again so very very interesting to see what's going to happen uh with ETH it's definitely yeah it, it's making moves for sure and it has out you know it has outpaced Bitcoin uh, by a significant amount uh, this year and you know I don't know how long you've been around in the space but they were talking about the flippening back in 2017 where they believe ethereum would be number one and it'd take over Bitcoin's dominance and all the rest of it they're now talking about it possibly happening again this year and in the not too distant future. You know, there's a lot of hype and, you know, things being built around Ethereum and Ethereum could be, you know, number one. Uh, and at the moment with the way it's performing, I just, I don't see the point in uh, comparing ETH to BTC. Uh, I'd rather just compare the two to US dollars until we uh, have an obvious retrace from uh, Ethereum where it falls below and BTC leads the way. Or if Ethereum just continues to lead the way, then yeah, we may as well compare BTC to ETH, not the other way around. But anyway, that's just my personal thoughts. And last but not least, we come over here. So price prediction of $180,000 in a bush, bullish case uh, from John, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I see, and I've probably butchered that as well. But he's basically saying that, uh, you know, the in two years' time, Bitcoin could be worth $180,000. Now, there's some things that need to kind of go its way, obviously, uh, to get to $180,000. And 
you know, it might only stay at one hundred and eighty thousand dollars for a, for an hour or two, or a day or two, or a week or two, and then chances are it'll probably retrace. So it won't be worth one hundred and eighty thousand dollars at its base price. Uh, I mean, look, it could be worth more its base price in two years' time. Who knows? But I think that would be the kind of most you know extreme bullish case that it gets to 180,000 at the peak of the next bull run but there are people saying $288,000 uh, and I don't know to be honest I've got no idea I'm just going to keep my eye on the markets but he did say Bitcoin needs an influx of $90 million per day to spike above $100,000 so that, that's a lot of money that needs to be going into Bitcoin uh, per day but you know the article goes on to say that you know once it really starts to get into the FOMO and all the rest of it 90 million dollars per day going into Bitcoin you know considering the world population and all the money in that uh, is is not you know it's not out of the realms but yeah for it to go obviously to 90 million uh, uh, sorry a hundred thousand it's got to be 90 million per day so people who are saying that you know it needs to uh, it could possibly go to 288 thousand dollars per Bitcoin well, that's a lot of money per day that needs to be going into Bitcoin. And I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Again, my, 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 my aim is to just follow the markets and follow the trend. I don't need to pick exactly when it hits its all-time high, and I don't need to pick exactly when it hits its all-time low. If it gets up to, let's say it gets up to 90,000, and people are unsure of where Bitcoin's going, uh, you know, if if I see it hit ninety thousand, and then I see it pull down to say eighty thousand, and then I see it come back back up to eighty seven thousand, but then I see it drop down below eighty thousand, that's going to basically signal that maybe there's a trend that's changed, and that's when I'll probably uh, think about selling. If I haven't already sold some before, then I've got some targets that I'm wanting my cryptos to hit before I uh, start to sort of scale out slowly but surely. Not completely, but scale out what I'm happy to hit. But I am saving some for when I believe we've kind of hit that peak. And then I'm just waiting for the trend change. Again, if if the peak is 90,000 and I don't sell at exactly 90,000, that's all right, I'm fine. I don't mind selling at 80,000. I don't mind selling at 78,000. Uh, but I would hate to sell at 40,000 and then watch it go to 90,000. So... I've got my price points where I'll slowly scale out with some, but then I'll be holding on to some where I'm waiting to see, you know, again, whatever the peak is, because it could go to 288,000 like some people are predicting, who knows? And if it does go to 288,000, I want to have some ready for when it comes back. Again, if it goes to 280,000, then we see it drop down to 260,000, jumps back up to 268,000 and then drops back down to 258,000, then obviously there's going to be a trend change there. And I don't mind selling some at $258,000, you know, missing out on the $288,000. At least I had some left. Again, if I, you know, sold it all at uh, 50,000, I'd be kicking myself when I got to 90,000 and I'd be kicking myself when it got to 180,000. And I'd be kicking myself even more when it got to 288,000. So you've got to have some targets. You've got to have a bit of a plan. And again, just follow the trend. If the trend is it's just continuing to rise and continuing to rise, have some. Have some ready to be sold once you see the trend change. Or just have your own plan. I'm not offering you financial advice. I'm just telling you what my plan is. And that's my plan. I'm going to have some that is just going to ride until I see the trend change. Because I mean, now don't get me wrong, I'm going to put this out there, but I don't think it's going to happen. Imagine if for, you know, just some out there figure, Bitcoin hit a million dollars in this bull run. Now I do not think in any way, shape or form it can hit a million dollars in this bull run. But imagine if it did and you sold out at $50,000. <laughs> Every time it went up another fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000, you would just be kicking yourself. So... Now you know, that's my plan. I'm going to start to scale out once we get to certain points and then I'm going to have some crypto left over to just, I'll let it ride until I see, you know, a trend change. And then I'll sell that last part out and I'll have the, you know, the cash waiting to rebuy back in when we hit the next, you know, low point. That's my plan. 
Now you know. <laughs> all right, that's it for me today. This has been a bit of a long one. I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train today, and I'll see you next time.